Hello and welcome to Big Marker. My name is Hannah Scherer and I'm the Director of Customer Success here at Big Marker. Now we'll be covering about three different parts of the webinar experience today and the first one that I want to cover is the channel. Now the channel is like your company or organization's account on Big Marker. So this is the place where all of your webinar content will be stored and all of your recordings will be stored as well. Now it's up to you if you want to share this page or not. You can build subscribers to access your content or even share the page as a public resource, or you can privatize your content so that only yourself and any other admins on the account will be able to view it. Now speaking of admins, there's a certain thing called host licenses on BigMarker that I want to cover next. Hosts on BigMarker are going to be people who have admin access to the account, which means that they can create webinars on the account, and you can also host as many simultaneous webinars as you have host licenses. Also, each host gets their own designated meeting space, which looks like this, which will essentially be their own designated meeting space for them to host their private one-on-one -on -one meetings if they so choose. Now, your account will come with a certain number of included host licenses, but you can always add more by clicking Manage Co-hosts here or managing your co-hosts in your billing page on BigMarker. Now, the channel is like the macro view of your Big Marker experience. Again, it's your company account, and if you ever wanted to manage your settings, all you have to do is click this right icon here and click Settings or even Organize to organize the layout of the page. Now, to create webinars on the account, that brings us into more of the micro view of things, which are individual webinars and how to set them up. So to create a webinar, again, all you have to do is click this Create a Webinar button at the top right corner of pretty much any page on Big Marker. And when you click that page, you'll be brought to the next page, which asks you the type of webinar you want to create. Now on BigMarker, we have seven different types of webinars, so let's cover those now. The first webinar type is live. A live webinar is your standard manually hosted event. So this can be used for webinars, but it can also be used for trainings, classes, and even meetings. All you have to do is click to create, and then from there, you can set up your event and begin hosting. The next type is on-demand, and an on-demand webinar on BigMarker is simply just a recording that lives on a landing page on BigMarker. Now the advantage of this, rather than just you know putting it on YouTube or Vimeo, is that you can actually collect registrations to view the recording, you could even sell tickets to view the recording, and you can also customize the landing page. So it does take that recording a step further and allows you to get a little bit more bang for your buck. The next webinar type is automated, and automated webinars, we have two types, standard automated and also evergreen. Now these two webinar types are considered to be simulated live, which means that from the attendee's perspective, it seems like a live webinar, but it's actually pre-recorded, meaning that a recorded video will typically play, you can also trigger chat messages, pop-ups, polls, and other kind of engaging features to be utilized during the webinar that would not be accessible in something like an on-demand. Now, the cool thing about automated and evergreen webinars is that they actually are still hosted in a live webinar environment. And this means that the host can go in to moderate the session and even do like a hybrid webinar, which is partially pre-recorded, partially live in either the automated or evergreen webinar environment. Now, again, the two of these webinar types are exactly the same in what they do. The only difference is how they're scheduled. So automated webinars are scheduled individually like live webinars, whereas Evergreen will be scheduled to play on an automated recurring basis. So for example, I want this webinar to play every 30 minutes from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Monday through Thursday. And then you set that schedule and it will auto-generate those events. The next webinar type is live stream. And this is if you'd like to host the Big Marker webinar, but it would actually stream out to an audience on Facebook Live or YouTube Live. Then we have 24 seven webinars, which are simply just an always open live webinar room. It's great for quick drop-in meetings and quick sessions like more of the informal type, but you cannot record. So again, better for informal sessions than an actual true webinar. Finally, we have the webinar series type, which allows you to offer a grouping of webinars for one single registration. Great for series, um, such as you know courses or, or summits, something of that nature. Now, when you actually click on the create one uh, next to the webinar type you will actually want to create, all you have to do is give it a title, pick the date and time or, or time schedule that you want to offer it, and then click create webinar at the bottom. Once you've created your event, 
you generate what's called a landing page for that webinar, which is the place where people come to register, but it's also the place where people come to enter the webinar when it's live. And if you choose to record your webinar and you want to publish the recording for on-demand viewing, you can also publish it to this page. That means that this page acts as the webinar page throughout the entire life cycle of that event, and the link won't change throughout the entire life cycle either, which means you can share it at any time and it will take somebody to this landing page. Now, on this page, there are certain methods of customization that can be done. Um, I have live editing that I can do by clicking the edit page button here at the top. And live editing allows me to do things like editing the banner image, adding my own logo, um, adding a uh, button color or any of the kind of uh, tools that I have here in the left navigator. But I can also take it a step further and do what's called changing my template. If I change my template on Big Marker, that means that I can change the overall layout of the landing page on Big Marker, which means that if I preview one, you'll see that the entire layout of the page and functionality of the page will change pretty drastically. For example, this one has a full length image instead of a banner image, and it also has a registration form rather than a registration button. So it's nice to go through each different template design that you have access to, and then when you select the one that you like, it will reformat the images accordingly based on what you've added. So up to now, we've covered essentially what the attendees will see when they view your webinar. What you also have access to as a host is the back end of your webinar, which I can get to by clicking Manage Webinar. This brings me to, again, the back end where I have access to things like editing tools, emails, uh, management tools, and even things like integrations and automation. Each of these tabs has a set feature list that you can access, and for the most part, everything is very straightforward. In the edit tab, I have things like the ability to edit the webinar details for this webinar, or sell tickets to my webinar, or even manage dial-in settings. On the presenter tab, I can add what's called guest presenters to my webinar, and these are essentially guests who can co-present with me on this specific webinar, and they're free to add, and I can add as many as I like. So I can either, either add a new presenter from scratch, or I can also add a presenter that I've previously added from clicking in this drop-down tab. Now, when I add a new presenter, it's going to send that presenter an invitation to present co-present my webinar. Uh, one thing to note is that you can also modify the permissions for the pre presenters. You can decide if they have full admin access during the webinar, can manage the back end of the webinar, and other kind of presenter displays as well. Now, the next tab is design. And the design tab covers almost essentially what we covered on the landing page with the ability to change your template, but it also gives you live webinar access as well. So what I mean by that is you can actually brand your own live webinar with your logo and theme color so that the top banner of your live webinar will be fully customized with your own colors and branding. You can also save this as a default field so that each webinar you host will have the same branding. Now the next tab is emails and invitations, and you are welcome to send invitations to your webinar using the Big Marker email system, but it's not required. You can always share your link or use our APIs or integrations to import registrations into Big Marker. Now, one thing to note though, is once somebody is registered on Big Marker's end, they automatically receive a series of three emails, one confirmation and two reminder emails leading up to the webinar. You'll be able to edit these emails or delete them, but it's important to at least keep one active because each of these emails contains what's called a personalized login link, which is a one-click entry point into the webinar. That link knows which person is entering and it auto logs them in with their registration credentials so you can view in your webinar reports if they attended and what they did during the webinar. Following those, we also have post-webinar follow-up as well. So things like recording publish notification, webinar feedback survey, and even general emails as well. So if you wanted to send a deal, perhaps following your webinar or something like that, you'd be able to use the general emails template for that. The next tab is Manage Webinar, and this is actually our home base when we come to our back end of our webinar. At the top here, we have the dashboard, which gives us our quick links, to, quick links to the page. So things like your shareable webinar link, if you wanted to share it on social media or in a blog post or something like that. And we also have things like the copy webinar functionality, the ability to practice for your webinar, and even the option to delete your webinar from the landing page. 
Also in this section, you have a lot of marketing and management tools, things like the ability to embed a widget on your site, so a registration form or the live webinar feed. The option to preload content for your webinar, meaning all of the slides, videos, handouts, polls, and offers you'd like to share manually during a webinar, you can pre-upload them. This isn't actually where you would upload content for an automated or evergreen webinar, but we will cover that next. Finally, at the top of the page here, we also have a few other bells and whistles that you can utilize, such as custom registration fields, uh, if you wanted to collect more data on your registrants than just name and email, and other things like waiting room customization, confirmation page, and other marketing tools like SEO and optimization. Again, the next thing we'll cover is automation. And again, if you're hosting an automated or evergreen webinar, this is the place to set it up. But if you're not, you can ignore this section altogether. So again, in the automation tab here, we have the ability to add automations to our automated webinar. And to do that, I have a timeline here with the default settings just being the start and the end time of the webinar. And between those fields, I can either add individual new auto events, I can choose to play video, send a chat, post poll, handout, or offer. And when I do, a drawer will slide out asking me the exact moment to apply that uh, to the webinar and then it will just automatically trigger. I can save that and it will go directly into the timeline. So I can individually build on my event, again, using new auto events, or I can also import from a previously hosted webinar, meaning that I select the webinar that I previously hosted and want to share, the events from that webinar I want to share as well, and I can import all the events into my timeline automatically. Finally, we have the integrations tab, which allows me to integrate with tools that directly integrate with BigMarker. A lot of these will be CRM tools like ActiveCampaigns, HubSpot, Marketo, Salesforce, but we also do offer a Zapier integration. So if your favorite tool is not listed directly here, you can also use this tool to sync them up to integrate with one another. Now again, what we've covered so far is the webinar creation process and setup. The next thing that I want to cover and last thing that I want to cover in today's demo is the hosting experience. And we'll cover this from both a host and an attendee's perspective. And the first thing to note is I'm entering today's session as a host. So I'll go ahead and enter this webinar. And the first thing that I see when I enter my webinar is something that my attendees automatically will not see. What attendees will see is either if they enter into a waiting room, if you've set that up, then they'll just hang out there until the webinar goes live. Otherwise, they'll enter into the live webinar room. But again, what the host sees is the ability to choose an audio option, meaning if they want to dial in or share their computer-based microphone or webcam. Now it's not required to join now. If you wanted to enter your webinar first before joining um, via computer-based audio or telephone audio, you can, you can always choose later. So if I X out, this is what the blank state of the webinar room will look like for me, again, as the host. To first illustrate what my attendees will see, I have some preloaded slide content that I'll go ahead and open. And once I open this, I'll go ahead and zoom in because Attendees really only see two of really the four parts of the webinar experience. And that would be whatever is being shared on the presentation screen here, meaning slide content, uh, video content, again, such as YouTube or MP4, screen sharing. And then in addition to that, we can share up to nine microphones or webcams simultaneously. Now to the right of that, attendees also have access to the chat panel, meaning they have access to public and private chat, Q&A, polls, and handouts. Now you can certainly limit what your attendees can and cannot do in this section, but again, this is the two kind of default things that your attendees will see on the screen. Now what your attendees will not see, but what you have access to as a host, is the sharing toolbar here at the top right corner of your screen. This is what allows you to do things like share mic, webcam, screen, slides, videos, and offers during your webinar in real time. And if you've preloaded any content, you can open them and access them at any time by clicking on the tab and retrieving your file. Finally, I have my host control panel, which is where I can control my webinar. So I have a couple sections here as well, namely the audience tab, which allows me to modify audience permissions inside the webinar room on a global and individual basis. So for example, if I wanted to do things like turn on or off the ability for attendees to see one another in the webinar room or enabling or disabling of the public chat or Q&A, I have that functionality here in the audience permission section. Now, one thing to note is a couple of these features are off by de default. 
and uh, those would be the enable all attendee mics and webcams option. Now if I turn these on, it's not turning on everyone's mics or webcams, uh, but it is giving all of your attendees access to be able to share. I don't recommend this tool for webinars. It's much better utilized as a meeting tool. So instead, I recommend keeping these off unless you're doing a small scale meeting and instead allowing attendees, if you so choose, in the bottom uh, individual permission section, you can find individuals attendees names and enable their mic or webcam accordingly. Finally, we have the ability to record our webinars simply by clicking the record icon here and then clicking start recording when we go to that recording tab. You will also be notified in the lower left hand corner of your screen to remind you to record your webinars. So you'll get a little notification. I think it's two minutes before your webinar starts. And then finally, the automation tab. If you are hosting an automated or evergreen webinar and you want to join that webinar to follow along, you can actually follow along with the events in real time on this automation tab. And what I mean by that is that all of your automations will be listed out here and with countdowns next to each individual automation. So that means that if you wanted to do uh, one of those kind of hybrid style webinars where you are interjecting with a mic or a webcam or something like that, you won't disturb the flow of the, con of the actual automations that you have set up. But that's really it for today's session. Again, to quickly recap, we've covered the Big Marker channel, the webinar setup process, and also the hosting experience as well. Thank you so much for joining me today. It was a pleasure and happy hosting.